Hello, my name is Josh Atkinson, and you have once again stumbled upon my portrait painting YouTube channel, mostly, mostly portraits. Um, so today we're going to be working on this woman. Um, I don't know, I have a bit of a complicated relationship with this painting because it just looks so much better in real life than it does in photographs. And I realize people say that all the time, but I don't know, just trust me, it does. But I think it's worth even if it doesn't translate exactly, I think I accomplished a lot of really cool things in terms of like creating a sense of motion in the skin, um, the colors, the brush strokes, you know, the usual stuff. So um, without further ado, let's get on to the time lapse. So here is our source image, um, woman from the internet, and here's our time lapse. I'm going to start with the Andrew Loomis circle, except I don't understand it because I didn't go to art school. Um, but I understand that it at least tells you how to create the direction of the eyebrows and everything uh, gets painted in um, relation to that. Or to other things. I mean, the more features you get down, you know, you can determine uh, where the, let's say, the right nostril should be by lining it up, like holding your paintbrush. I'm sure you all already know this, but holding the paintbrush up to the source image and seeing what the edge of that right nostril lines up with, and if it lines up with maybe the inner corner of the right eye or the outer corner or the outer rim of the eyeball, then there's your metric. I guess there isn't always a clean answer like that, but if there isn't, maybe you could rely on the, the left side of the nose and see, you know, the edge of that does seem to line up with the edge of the left eyeball. So that's a lot of painting. I know a lot of people use grids or trace, um, or basically just do a full drawing underneath it and then, and then I guess spray it with a fixative. I just don't, I don't, I don't draw. I haven't drawn in 20 years. I don't know how to do it at this point. Um, they really are separate skills. So, so yeah, maybe the way I'm doing it, again, untrained, is definitely more trial and error, more, uh, mistakes get made and maybe fewer paintings turn out successfully but they don't wind up on YouTube, so, uh, so, so what's it matter? You know, if a painting crashes and burns, but no one sees you post it on the internet, did it really happen? I'm in a philosophical mood. Anyway, so this was a challenging painting because there's, first of all, she's probably covered in, in, in makeup and foundation because she's, uh, interviewing if you watch the video I posted last week, I believe this is the woman who was interviewing the subject of that painting, the man with the really florid, beautifully red cheeks. Um, I think this is the woman who was interviewing him, and so she's got all of this makeup on, I assume, and she's front lit, which creates a very flat um, face. You know, there's not a lot of shadow, there's a, a, a tiny bit of it on the left side of her uh, cheek and jaw, and I'm... I guess I'm seeing some of it in her forehead because there's a lot of gray purple there. Um, but like generally it's, it, you don't, you want the light to come from one direction and be very strong and it should not be front lit. Um, if you know the Manet painting Olympia, uh, it's front lit and it was a huge scandal um, among, I guess, rich people who could afford to be scandalized by things like paintings. Uh, in like 1860 or whatever, because she was lit from the front, and, and that was very much against the classical uh, academic rules of painting, which I guess had a lot more power back then, but I guess painting in general had a lot more power back then. Um, I feel like I spent too much time on Instagram, and I see so many paintings, and I feel like really young people now, they say painting, and they it doesn't even occur to them to say, like, digital painting or an iPad painting. And listen, I know, okay, boomer, I know how I sound, but I just, I don't know when I think of a painting, I think of paint, but whatever. I'm going to get canceled for that. I'm so sorry. But anyway, on the topic of paint, while this was difficult because of the lack of dimensional shadow, uh, my favorite thing about it is the thick passages, the impasto, um, to, to use old academic language, the, th the thick passages of paint, they create this sense of motion. <clears throat> and that 
I used to think that my favorite thing about paintings was texture, and I do... I mean, that's true. I love a really thick painting, a gloppy painting, and I also love, like, some... Like, this is why I love Cezanne so much, because some of his paintings were almost... They were oil paintings, but they were almost thinned down to the point of watercolor. They have translucency, like the white canvas is shining through. And then others are painted with a palette knife, or I don't know. Some of them look like they were painted with his fist. They're so thick. They're beautiful. He's just a spectacular artist. Um, and we're the same zodiac sign, whatever. Um, but uh, but so I I do love texture, but I think what I actually enjoy the most about texture is the sense of motion that it creates. When you smooth everything out and you have very flat images, which I've spent a lot of time, like I've done a bunch of that, um, it it just feels beautiful. But like I don't know, I I, I the, the the brush strokes that I'm leaving on, whether they be thick paint or whether they just be unblended colors next to each other. Like on her forehead, we have a red next to a a neutralized purple next to a very um, I, I don't know, just Caucasian skin color, like, those would typically be blended out and, and flattened in, in traditional uh, portraiture. But having the contrast of the colors and having the contrast of, of smoother brushstrokes and thicker passages of paint, it creates that motion. And I feel like it, I don't know, it just makes the eye travel more. And I can't speak for other people and their eyeballs, but that's what excites me when I see a painting is when the paint, I mean, it's the paint, it's not the subject matter, I really could care less if it's a tree or a vase or a face, is the paint making my eye jump from the upper left to the lower right, to the middle, to the, to the somewhere else, running out of directions. Like, that's what I dig, and I think that's really what I'm trying to pursue in my own portraiture. Um, so, so yeah, the way to do that, of course, does create these contrasts in tone and color and texture, uh, which some people could see as unflattering, but, but I don't know, those people, girl, just take a photograph if you want to, like, I don't know, you want to be flattered, hire a makeup artist, take a photo, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so this is the finished painting. It, um, it, I don't know why, but it just looks better in person. Maybe the texture is not captured or the color in, in my camera, but anyway, it is, um, a five by seven inch oil painting on a canvas panel. So then that is how we arrived at this painting of this uh, woman on the internet. That could be the name of the of the painting. That could be the name of every painting of mine. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't I haven't recorded the uh, voiceover yet, but I did want to point out one little fun thing. Like he started just using fingerprints like here and then here and just kind of leaving them in place. I don't know. I thought that was kind of a, a cool thing. I don't know. Maybe a, an art historian one day would be like, he left his fingerprint, but it'd be a metaphor, but then it wouldn't be. Anyway. All right. So, um, so that's been this painting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe. And I will be back next Monday with, I believe, another portrait. Is it a flower? I think it's a portrait. We'll find out next Monday. Okay. Until then, have a happy and creative seven days. Bye-bye.